Uh, are we at the right location? Yeah, this is just some old well and nothing else. I've double and triple checked. This is where the distress signal is coming from. Hey, I see something glowing at the bottom of the well. Yeah, I see it too. My senses indicate it's some kind of gemstone. Maybe that's what's giving off the distress signal. Try grabbing it with your suit's long arm function. Alright. And... Got it! Huh. That doesn't look like a distress signal. Alex, throw him back in the well! Now! What? No! Ah! <coughs> <coughs> oh no. Something's crawling out of the well. Oh, <laughs> what? What is it? <laughs> well, well, well. What do we have here? <laughs> Hello, everybody. I am in my pajamas eating a bowl of mini wheats and drinking a can of Rockstar Pure Zero Silver Ice because I, Michael Chan, D list actor, am back on the Hellbound podcast and I don't give a darn. Because I am exhausted from taking care of a newborn as well as a three-year-old, almost Thor-year-old. Did I just say Thor-year-old? Yeah, I'm thinking about Chris Hemsworth again because he is dreamy and I keep dreaming about him every time I get some shut-eye, which is usually about 15 minutes or less during the day. You know, I have slept about four hours in the last five days. You know what? Let me introduce you to my co-host. Hey, co-host, who are you? I'm Alex, uh, Alex Blackburn, the founder of the Hellbound Horror Festival. Just to sidetrack us straight away, uh, what's your mic input currently? Is it, is, it, is, it, is, it, is it too much? No, no, it sounds like it's the possibly the microphone built into your laptop. Oh, so it sounds like crap. How does this sound? That sounds a that sound? <laughs> thousand times better. Oh, wow. So I did that entire introduction <laughs> with a crappy mic. You know, this is how all of you listeners know I don't give a darn because yeah. I didn't even bother to check what microphone I was using. And I was being all badass on my actual good microphone when my stupid microphone was the one picking me up. Well, Wonderful. We're, we're keeping that. You know we're, what? we're not doing that again. <laughs> well, we're not doing that again. We're not. No, no, no. We're keeping all the mistakes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I, I, got, I got, this got this thing again. Thing. I need a, I need a ghost face version of that. I really want that. I am excited to be back. So I have an unboxing, and it is of a Funko Pop of Pinhead. I'm super jealous. That's epic. That is epic. Yep. I am holding in my hand uh, the box for... <clears throat> Pinhead from Hellraiser 3. And um, I'm going to see some people, some people like to keep their pops, their Funko Pop figures in their boxes because they, they're like, oh, it's worth more. It's a collector's item. Well, you know what? I'm going to open the box and I'm going to make all of you scream. All you collectors scream as I open the box. Oh, yeah. Listen to that box opening. Listen to me destroying the box on the air. Oh, no. Oh, no. The price of my, the worth of my pop is dropping right now. Oh, I'm going to throw the box on the floor. Oh, oh, the box is ruined. Oh. <laughs> that is, oh, that is the that. sound. Oh, oh, yeah, I'm scrunching the plastic. Oh, poor collectors. Oh, it's worth nothing now. <laughs> I I only own two uh, Funko Pops, Mulder and Scully, but I absolutely love them. Well, the all oh, right. I still have to mail you the uh, the your That's Christmas fine. present. Apologize for that. It's been um don't apologize. Crazy crazy month. Uh, so here he is, Pinhead. Holding that, the awesome. lament, uh, bleh, la, lament configuration in his left hand, and the cool thing is they actually like did a really good job with the details, like all the pins uh, on the head. They even have like all the lines on his face. You know, they could have just left the head smooth, you know, and just put pins in it. But no, 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 they they have all the detailing 
uh, paint job on his uh, body is phenomenal. Like, yeah, you that can see all his all his you, implements, his 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 saws and all that, and then his chest, his ribs, and and the, oh man, this thing is super awesome. If you just hold it just to the right of the microphone, I'm sh- I want to do a screenshot of something now. Right, uh, just here? to your to your right. My right, this. Yeah. yeah. I've got a photo to show you. Hopefully, this will show up. Oh my God, that's, that's awesome! So that's Ian Rayburn, filmmaker Ian Rayburn, has received his uh, limited edition uh, Hellbound tea purchased off our store. Nice, um, nice. Thank it, you. That's epic. Thank you for buying it. Are you taking a screenshot? Uh, I'm gonna oh. I'll just just grab it from the video. So if I lift that up, one sec. See, I look like a mess today, so that's why that's why I uh, I'm putting him in front of my face. Excellent. Yeah, there you go. All right, so that's the unboxing. I highly recommend if you can find the the Pinhead Funko Pop. It is really well done. It's just so much detail on this thing, like way more than usual, which is that's really nice. Makes me really happy. And they've all he's also got that supportive. A collar thing at the back, which is oh, yeah, yeah. He even has the collar in the back. That's yeah, really, that's dope. That's right, great. right. And even like his his, if you can see his nails, they're painted <laughs> as well. That's um, awesome. like just the details that they put into this thing is phenomenal. This is going in my apartment, my second home. I want to ask you about um, Archive 81. I've seen a oh, screenshot. Yeah. I've been tempted by it. And there's a whole thing online about uh, people of the newest generation trying to figure out what the cameras are and their cameras from our generation. So can you tell me a little bit about the show? Well, um, oh, man. So so I had no idea what I was getting myself into when I when I started that series. All I had heard from people was that, it is good and it is horror and that is it that is all i heard uh and i was just i've been so just exhausted and busy that i'm like you know what i just i just need something to help relax my mind and yes horror somehow relaxes me i am crazy (laughs) um but so i chose archive 81 and my goodness it is the best way to describe it is a mixture of uh cosmic horror and and uh almost a a a thriller so basically the the basic storyline is a uh woman goes to investigate a building uh with a dark past uh for her uh for her her education just for her thesis and meanwhile, simultaneously, a man uh, is restoring footage um, found from the same building. That sounds awesome. Is he yeah. in the same timeline as her? Is now he we're kind of... spoiling. Oh, like, oh, even that? Even that's a spoiler? Wow. In a way, yes. Okay, that sounds very interesting. I'd rather not go any further. But it's just... You know, you know my love for anything Lovecraft, for cosmic yeah. horror, and the 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 Lovecraftian influence in this show is is very very strong, and I feel personally that they did it right. They did it well. It is one of the best Lovecraftian horrors I have watched in a very very long time. I there was not a single episode of this show. Um, that I where I felt that it was a filler or that I was not satisfied or that I didn't want to keep going. Every episode left me wanting more. The performances are top notch. There these actors are giving their their all. And the other thing I appreciated was that the lead is a uh the, the male lead is a black man. Uh uh HP Lovecraft is notoriously known to be a racist um something that i i i'm sad about because of how much i love his his works and how uh influential his works are but uh to have 
in a way, you know, a black person there in, 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 in such a way, reclaiming it and modernizing the genre is, is I felt a, a good move, but also he is perfect for the role. He does an incredible job. Uh, one of the things I appreciated about basically every role in this show is none of them had to be any specific ethnicity. It's not about anyone's culture. It's about the characters and the, that's and, what and, it should always be happening. about. Yeah. Right. I mean, there, there is a place for, for, uh, movies and shows and whatnot, uh, about people's cultures, right? Mm-hmm. When, when those stories need to be told or, or should be told or want to be told. But in a, in a series like this, there's no need for, for, for race and culture to, to be something that is talked about. And what I found interesting was the cast was quite diverse. Uh, regardless, which made me very happy to see. Yeah, absolutely. Um, and and that's fantastic. But I mean, outside of all that, like I said, this it, it's just it is a phenomenal show. Phenomenally shot, phenomenally paced, phenomenally written. The sound engineering is is just just top notch, and the performances. Uh, like I have to say it again, the performances just blew me away. Like I haven't. It's, it's not often a TV show can can grab you like this. Is um, it a, is, is it a limited series? Um, it's a Netflix series. So and and it's only eight episodes, if I remember correctly. Great. Um, but it, and it's only one season so far. But they leave they leave the door open for a second should they want to. How about that? That sounds good to me. I, that. We, I was on the verge of watching that the other day, and then you need to. Then ends up watching a, a kind of a horror thriller, more of a thriller called Villains with uh, Bill Scar- uh, Skarsgård. Yeah, uh, yeah, that that looks absolutely epic. Um, it sounds great because that kind of look Lovecraftian um, horror is it's on trend now. It really is, especially mm-hmm. with um, Mandy and Color Out of Space, and yeah, I think that it's on the up and up. And I really that's yeah. fascinating, especially especially a series that um, is is the the fact it's that kind of fant- horror fantasy uh, is available on Netflix are producing it, and thankfully Ooh. with Netflix kind of spreading their wings to a certain degree, they are opening themselves up for all kinds of content now. So instead of going for just the mega stars, there are obviously f- films that uh, that are there. But then the shows that kind of encompass everything now, and what you were yep. saying about diversity in that—that's what I found with Ghostbusters. It was mm-hmm. just so, so well balanced, and for all the kind of right reasons, it wasn't just, you know, rhetoric from one side or another. It was kind of really well balanced, and it didn't really matter. And There's no agenda to it. It's exactly, just, yeah, it just looks right, you know, and it feels right. Yeah, absolutely. That sounds well. That's definitely going on my list, my ever-growing list of uh, Netflix watches. Um, so yeah, I watched a, a horror film called Villains on Netflix with Bill Sk- uh, Skarsgård mm-hmm. about a couple that break into a house and they're kind of would-be thieves on the road, and they break into a house and they discover a few dark, sinister things going on in the home, and there's a girl in the basement. And then the parents come home and they're still in the house. So it has this little bit of a don't breathe vibe, but then it turns a bit, bit too playful for me, mm-hmm. but I actually quite recommend uh, villains. It's quite a small movie. Um, you'll recognize most of the cast. Um, but that was a, that was a good flick. We watched the other night and that was instead of what watching archive 81. Um, so I'll definitely be checking that out. What is your physical media like? Do you have a lot of physical media? I so the camera isn't picking up because it's in my studio, but on the other side of my camera is an entire wall of Blu-rays and DVDs. Yeah, how do you how do you feel about purchases online? You mean like uh, actually? I'm just going to turn the camera so Alex can see. That's oh, my basement. Awesome. So that's you, you, uh, oh, that's a massive basement. I wish I had that. So that's, awesome. so that's oh yeah. I'm sorry for the mess that you're don't, seeing. Don't apologize. But uh, <laughs> yeah, when when our first kid came, we like 
yeah, just dumped a bunch of stuff in the basement that we used to entertain in and then second kids. So now anyways, that there's like a wall of uh, DVDs and Blu-rays of TV shows. That's a shelf and in the front of a shelf, there's piles the of the board games. And then over there are my Blu-rays and DVDs of movies. And there's a poster of a Dalek. And then there's underneath the, the Dalek is a shelf with CDs like music as well as a cassette and CD player. Yes, kids. Uh, cassette <laughs> tapes. Uh, you can't really see it in, because it's being blocked by my uh, voiceover uh, like soundproof box. And then over here is a poster of me and two other actors like from the production called Asian Action, which was made for a theme park in China. What? quite a few years ago early in my career awesome. yeah i'm on i'm the villain in that and then over here uh, pop figures and the black pearl and then there is cthulhu right there giant cthulhu that is my basement that none of you can see but alex could that's but dope. i described that's really it so dope. all of you hopefully uh get an idea but yes i have i have a lot of physical mean how do i so i stopped buying um blu-rays like frequently over the last i would say five years I, I i only buy stuff that i really 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 want to own uh on on that yeah. like recently my most recent purchase is uh ghostbusters afterlife well that's actually a gift but i was given money for my birthday and then i went and bought it um but uh and i also have a copy of uh or will have a copy of Shang Chi, right? Um, things like that. But otherwise, everything else now I'm buying online, and I recognize that I don't own a copy, and that if Google, because <laughs> I buy most of my my movies on Google uh, Google Play, I guess they're changing it to Google TV now. But anyways, Google Play or Google TV, whatever you want to call it, I recognize if they ever stop. <laughs> I lose everything. Like yeah. I, 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 I get that, but I, I think at this stage in my life, with how like you know two kids, in a house full of clutter, that I'm trying to declutter, and I think not adding more clutter to the clutter is is good for me, and whatever. If 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 I lose everything in my 80s or whatever, <laughs> so be it. I've uh, I've just gone through a great purge of books and VHS ta tapes, and actually I threw away a Muppets. Um, oh, what was the format before VHS? Betamax. Was, yeah, I actually had that, and I thought about keeping it. I thought I'm never going to be able to play this. Is it worth anything online? Do a Marie Kondo and throw it away. Um, you so didn't think to send it to me, dude. No, well, if you want, uh, if you want two hundred books, you can have all my book. I'm giving away, <laughs> I'm giving away literally hundreds of books, and I'm trying to figure out a way to, if they're not really worth anything for me to give away, I'm, I'm going to give them away either to charity or. Oh, that's smart. You know, and it makes, and I know, you know, when you get a book and you really like it, like I've got a, a bunch of children's books like C.S. Lewis and Roald Dahl and a, a lot of others. And yeah. like my Harry Potter books, I love them. I'd probably read them again, but I'm going to give them away because it takes up so much room. There's only two of us in the house, but the physical room it takes up is, yeah, I'm never going to read this again. It's the same thing with Blu-rays for me and physical media. Am I really going to get joy out of watching this again? Like Ghostbusters Afterlife, it hasn't come out on Blu-ray here, I don't think yet, but when it does- It has over here. I know I'm going to buy it because I'm going to watch that multiple times because I absolutely love the film and I connected with it really well. Um, yep. But then there's uh, then there's other things that like yep yeah, I'm happy to watch it once. Now do I do I stream it? Do I you know do I rent it? It's a difficult choice really because I don't want to throw away anything I can still play. Um, so every VHS I used to own has gone pretty much. Like I'm staring at my shelf right now, and there are so many Blu-rays there that I know I'll never watch. Like we never. Should have, we should have a Blu-ray exchange. That's what we should do. I'll send you a bunch <laughs> of stuff. Um, but I've got duplicates. Like I've actually got duplicates already. 
which is ridiculous. Oh, my phone. I only have a small amount of duplicates, one of which is the Hunger Games. I don't even know how that happened. <laughs> I'm very upset that I have a duplicate of the Hunger Games. I tried to give it away one time, and it didn't work. So Yeah, well, I had, um, I had a box set of Fast and the Furious that someone bought me. I think it was the first six films. I'm like, I'm never going to watch these again. I really, really don't like them. And uh, yeah, there's... <laughs> I, I love Hobbs and Shaw, though. Hobbs and Shaw's great. I'm, and, and Tokyo Drift. Come on. Because <laughs> yeah. we all know that's not really that's not really a Fast and Furious movie, right? They just made a really cool movie about drifting cars and then slapped the, the Fast and Furious logo on it and then had Vin Diesel show up at the end. Yes, spoilers. Screw off. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one that's the one spoiler or non-spoiler I don't give a F about, you know? And d- does his car have a spoiler on it? I don't even remember. I don't care. He there looks ca- I've said I think I've said this before. Actually, I said this in a debate episode with Dave Mader and a couple of other people. Oh yeah, yeah. And I was talking about how I think it was a franchise you hate or something, and I said chose uh, Fast and the Furious because Vin Diesel <laughs> look, looks constipated all the time, and I'm I'm so tired of those films and the vapid nature of them. You know, he Dude. does, he does. Okay, okay. First, <laughs> it's because he's trying to act. Yeah. But, <laughs> but no, no, dude. Like Vin Diesel, Vin Diesel is a great actor when he gets the right role and i no offense to anyone who loves fast and furious i never ever ever (laughs) found him to be comfortable in that series whatever but i will say right now that i actually do okay when i was young i didn't care for fast and furious because i don't really care about fast cars i don't care about cars really i don't uh unless it's 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 like 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 a dodge viper that's like literally the only car i care about um but uh, the thing about fast and furious is once it evolved once it stopped being about people racing their cars and stuff uh i started to kind of appreciate it like the more ridiculous it got the more i appreciated it because (laughs) it's one of those it's you watch it once you don't you'll never watch it again at least i won't but here's the thing if you need something to literally just turn your brain off and have fun with because you know it's going to be ludicrous. Wait, isn't ludicrous in? in yeah, fast, yeah, whatever. Is, yeah. You'll know it's going to be ridiculous. And it's just going to be so dumb that you're just going to just sit there and, and, and have fun. That This is the series to go to. I had a debate with someone about that. It's called... It's called is there value in in movies and entertainment where you literally are supposed to shut your brain off and enjoy his argument was you can never shut your brain off and my argument is actually yeah you can and the fact that you can't shut your brain off is a you problem not me <laughs> yeah but, and um but no, seriously, that's why I appreciate it. There there are there are movies out there and there's entertainment out there made specifically so you can just just forget about all the everything in the world, not take it seriously and just have fun and then never watch it again. And that's what um, Fast and Furious is. Now Hobbs and Shaw, Hobbs and Shaw is a different animal. That spin-off is in my opinion the best Fast and Furious movie, followed by Tokyo Drift. Which is I, also not a Fast and Furious movie. I, I know someone that's in uh, Hobbs and Shaw that also played Darth Vader in Rogue One. Um, oh my goodness! He's an action. Uh, he's an he's an actor and uh, kickboxer from North Wales, and wow. he's the mechanic that uh, that ho- is holding the span. You know that that corridor scene in Hobbs and Shaw, and the rocks well, yeah. on one side is that tall guy that he's fighting with. So I know him. Um, Sweet, and he played. Uh, he did all the uh, Darth Vader stuff for uh, Rogue One. Uh, but he, he's a really good dude. Do you have a favorite foreign language horror movie? Ooh. Oh, that's so hard. I <laughs> know. I put you on the spot now. Oh, come on, man. There's so many good ones. So many good. What, okay, I'll, I'll just say one of my recent favorites is Train to Busan. Oh, I'm just Korea. about to say that. <laughs> yeah, 
because yeah oh my god like uh, there's just so many that i love from uh, especially from japan yeah. japanese horror oh my goodness they they know what they're doing they know how to terrify you they know how to really mess with your head but uh man i, I think the best way to the best way for us to kind of move on to that because that could be its own episode is um for us to come up with a list between us say three or four uh, say three each um of our favorite horrors of the next week and we'll we'll do a little post on our instagram facebook about that i would say mm-hmm. wreck or record or it's wreck uh i think it's a spanish horror film found footage about a uh, apartment block in spain that's absolutely terrifying and then the second film wreck 2 is about the swat team that approaches the building at the same time so the sequel happens at the same time and it's uh, is it a sequel? I don't see how it's it, maybe it's a sequel, uh, but it's that's absolutely wonderful as well. Um, so I think it's the Black Mask of Satan. I think it's Italian, and that is unbelievable. Um, I think that's actually on uh, Shudder, possibly. And let me find that. The I think it's it's called either called Black Sunday or The Mask of Satan. That's in 1968. So check that out, and it's absolutely yeah. stunning film. I think it's Italian, um, but yeah, a wonderful movie. And it's it's on par. The, the say the first act of the film is on par in terms of a classic, like um, uh, Frankenstein or Frankenstein's Monster. An absolutely brilliant movie. Um, so that that's one of my favorites but we'll come up with a list between michael and i uh before our next episode we might even talk about that a little bit more on our next episode yeah absolutely and i think my oh wow my michael chan doppelganger is trying to take me <laughs> offline by this destroying is, my camera. this is the uh, where's waldo black and white version no it took it took away they took away my video feed for a while i was like wait what's going on and i had to like mess around my computer well to get my feedback I thought you were going to give me a jump scare. That's what I thought was going to happen. Oh, I was trying to. <laughs> <laughs> but I realized I already look so messed up right now that I'm, I'm pretty terrifying to look at anyways. <laughs> that's that's my that's our February. I combined February. You've got a huge amount of you know family and work responsibilities. I've just got a huge amount of res- work responsibilities. I'm, I'm looking at my work diary and going, how is this ever going to end? And, um, but I'm going day by day because I had between you and I had a massive anxiety attack yesterday and I've oh, never no. really had them before. And it was because I had so, I was spinning plates in an evil fairground. That's what it felt like. I was all, I was, oh, it goodness. was like a sore thing where I had to constantly just spin plates and that's, that's how I felt. But I've had, a, I've had a few positive meetings today. I, I had a really fun uh, shoot in the cathedral in Chester uh, which I'll post some um, behind the scenes pictures of in on my other social media accounts. But yeah, it's uh, a crazy month. Uh, February is going to be yet another crazy month. And um, Michael, please look after yourself and your your fantastic family, and give my best to Jess. And any, I absolutely ev- will. Everyone listening, please just look after each other. Don't be an asshole. It doesn't take much to be a nice, kind person. And you have to look after each other because we're here for a very short period of time on this. We planet. are. So we are. Um, and don't, I think don't be an asshole. I, I would like to say that uh, this is this is funny coming from a horror podcast, but lead with love. Seriously, lead with love because that's the only way that I feel that we're going to get out of the mess that our world is in right now. Bye-bye, everybody. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. And uh, follow us on Instagram at the Podcast and Harness the Darkness. Bye.